Although I've been fishing the Great Lakes region for my entire life, I've never really focused my attention solely on smallmouth bass. The only time I've ever really targeted them at all uh, have been in creeks and streams that are local to me. And so I do have some experience in that area, but not fishing for them on inland lakes and certainly not out in the big water, the Detroit River, St. Clair River, uh, you know, big, big uh, connecting waters of the Great Lakes. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a few of the things that I've learned on a couple of different days out fishing. Uh, one of which was on a, an inland lake and the other was out on the uh, lower end of the Detroit River. And certainly if you're a, an experienced smallmouth bass fisherman and you've got uh, tips and pointers you'd like to share, would love to hear them in the comments. So stick around. Before we go on, please remember to hit that like button, ring that bell to be notified of our future videos, and consider subscribing to our channel. These three things really help the channel out by driving traffic. Thanks. So one of the things I did know about smallmouth bass is that they like rocky bottoms. I knew this from fishing creeks and rivers and, and occasionally running into them while fishing for other species. So I started off focusing a couple of areas that I knew about that had a, a rockier bottom um, or, a, or a bottom that was uh, rapidly changing. And so I was marking quite a few fish at the bottom of this hump. And after a few misses, I uh, finally picked up this nice fish. Nice one for the first one of the day. Not bad. So another place I found uh, some structure was around this lighthouse and um, you can probably see from the graph how quickly it kind of drops off around the uh, edges of this thing back down to the main uh, depth of the uh, lake bed. Um, this is right, this is the Detroit light, this is right at the uh, mouth of the Detroit River, uh, kind of where Lake Erie begins. And so the lake bed is relatively flat in this area, but um, where they built this uh, lighthouse, there's quite a bit of structure right around the base of it. It's kind of rocky. And so um, I was marking a number of fish here, and I did mark some bigger ones. Didn't really catch any monsters here, but um, I consistently got hit with uh, you know, some smaller smallmouth bass. Another area that I consistently found fish, uh, specifically in the lower end of the Detroit River, were eddy currents that were located at the ends of these rock walls. Typically, whenever there's a break in the current, like there is from these walls, you'll find an eddy located near the end of that wall. And it really depends on which direction the current is flowing. In this particular case that I'm showing here, the current is flowing perpendicular to the wall. So the current um, is running between that island in the background and the end of the wall, moving right to left through that break. And so the eddy is located right at the very end of the wall because there's a lot of current coming off from around the, the far side of the wall. Um, so right at the very, very end of that, um, I found several fish there. Um, and, you know, I know this from, from fishing smallmouth in streams. <clears throat> they don't want to fight that current all day. So they try to find places where they can uh, kind of sit and, and relax or not use so much energy and then ambush fish. And those eddies, these big eddies at the ends of these rock walls are perfect places for them to do that. Now on the inland lakes, uh, I tended to find fish anywhere where the shore was lined with rocks. And that's because oftentimes when the sh you see rocks right at the shoreline to prevent things like erosion and so on, um, those rocks are not located just along the shoreline, but they often are in the water and kind of extend out. And smallmouth, again, love to kind of hide behind rocks or, or search around rocks for things like crayfish and other forage. It's one of their favorite habitats. And so um, on the inland lake, I noticed fish were concentrated in areas that had rocky shoreline, and that's really not a surprise. Obviously, a big difference here is that the fish were not nearly as big as, as the ones that I was able to find out in the big lake and rivers, but 
in the Detroit River, but um, it was still fun nonetheless. So there were three different baits that I tried using over the course of these two fishing trips. And the first one that I tried was the tube. Uh, the areas I was fishing, I knew there was a lot of rocks and so on, so I imagined things like crayfish were uh, fairly abundant there. But I didn't do that great on them. I know it's a favorite of many smallmouth fishermen, and I'm not giving up on it. I'm going to be using it more and practicing with it. But um, it, it caught me a few fish, but, but it wasn't my top producer. Next, I tried the crankbaits, and uh, I, had, I bought a package of red-eye shad and some other deep-diving crayfish pattern sort of crankbaits tried them on and off. It produced the least, and I wasn't surprised about that. Um, you know, these things are fished more in the water column, whereas the other couple of baits I tried were more on the bottom, which is where smallmouth tend to spend most of their time feeding. So I, it has its time and place. I know I've caught them incidentally using crankbaits in other situations, but when I was purposely targeting them, these various crayfish patterns of crankbaits didn't do that well. So finally, the last bait that I tried was one that I'd never used before, but I had decided to try it based on a recommendation from my brother and my nephew who, who have used it before for bass and that is the ned rig and the ned rig is essentially just a jig head that's specially shaped so that it sort of stands up when it's uh, dropped to the bottom and the uh, and just a, a thicker plastic grub sort of plastic attached to it that sort of just uh, kind of hangs straight off the grub the pattern that i found worked best was to just cast it out let it drop to the bottom and then just twitch it along. And I don't know if the fish were detecting that as like a, a crayfish or just some other kind of a minnow bouncing along the bottom, injured fish, I don't know. But um, consistently, that pat once I started using that uh, method of retrieval, I started picking up fish pretty consistently. Most of these fish I was catching were in relatively shallow water. And here you can see I'm, I'm casting my bait most uh, right up to the shore and just kind of working it back. It does drop off. Um, most of the time I was hovering anywhere between 10 and 13, 15 foot of water where my boat was. And something I wanna point out on this clip here is that you'll notice I don't give up on my first uh, strike. Uh, that was the first hit. I felt a little tug there, a little um, tap. There was a second one, just kept at it, didn't retrieve it, just kind of kept skipping it along the bottom. The fish stayed with it. And finally, he takes it all the way and I'm able to get a good hook set on it and bring it in. Not an not a enormous fish, but I was reminded of this uh, from a video that my nephew did in a new channel that he started called Gen Z Outdoors. It's how important it is to not give up when you miss a strike. A lot of times the fish is still there. It's still interested. It's still following the bait. And my nephew uh, astutely points this out in his uh, first video that he did on his new channel. So I'll drop a link in the description to that channel if you're interested. It's a great channel to start to see things a little bit from a young person's perspective. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you think us older veterans, you know, we've been around and done, done all that, but there are little details to fishing all the time that we miss. And sometimes the younger folks that are out there looking at things from a fresh perspective, pick up on some of these. Check that out if you get an opportunity, I would encourage you to. That's gonna about wrap it up for today on this video. I'm gonna finish here with a few segments of fish that I caught using uh, these smallmouth baits that were not smallmouth. So hope you enjoy the rest of it and uh, we'll talk to you the next time. They're white bass. There's a fish. It's a perch. It's a yellow perch. Fish. Yeah, it's a sheephead. <laughs>